me, I think yesterday, that, that Miriam has been part of this project from the very beginning. Uh, because I spent some time at Birkbeck College uh, in 2011 with, with, with Miriam and her colleagues. And so, in fact, some of the, the framing um, of, this, of this project was, was very much influenced by um, our pilot site partners. Are you all here? Cheryl, Buddha, Sally, Sandy, Gavin, everybody else? That's wonderful. And, and, um, and to Vivian and Juliet, um, who are going to be the rapporteurs for the day, um, really fantastic that you, you are all here. It feels like we, we have a really a, a group of friends uh, with us. So today we are going to be giving some, uh, some feedback or some insights on this uh, three-year three project on lifelong learning and flexible provision that's been uh, going since January uh, 2012 and it's due to end uh, in June 2015. And the, the metaphor of time and flexibility you would have you would have picked up through through many of the of the invitations and and uh, today We'll be talking a lot about time and, and flexibility. So that's why you have Play-Doh on your tables and you have Lego pieces and that symbolizes the flexibility. Um, and, uh, and so that please, you can doodle as much as you like. Please play, play with the Play-Doh and play with the Lego. But uh, just as a, as, a, as a heart warmer, just to get you going, because you know that I'm Shirley Walters and I always do something stupid. So um, now your, your first task is um, within, I'm going to set the alarm here for three minutes. And I think you might be, there are only two of you at this table. Uh, Tammy, could you yeah, shift to this you. table? You're going to have to shift. Just so that you know it's a bit equitable and Chris and I oh know here's some more we might we might make it. Um, the first the first task you have is within three minutes, I'm gonna give you three minutes to think of as many metaphors, sayings uh, about time that you can think of. And you need to just write them up with your Koki pen on a strip of paper. And you need to put them, pin them up on the board there, that just-in-time board over there. So, are you are you ready? Are you ready? Just so these are metaphors and sayings about time. Let's see how many you can you can do in three minutes. On your marks, get set, go. Time is a really fascinating um, social construction of, um, of modernity. And it, regula it regulates our lives to the millisecond, as you've just experienced. It's an essential component of the topic today, lifelong learning and flexible provision. It's because of the highly regulated timetables and schedules used in educational institutions and in workplaces that uh, many of our students have to become contortionists to move between, between work, between the university and home. And it's these very tight time schedules, uh, timetables, and that uh, the, the question really arises is do we have to do this? Like, do we have to? Uh, use time in the way that we do, and I think this is this is a question which which we need we need to pose. So, you know, can we think about time differently? Can we use time differently in order to help working students succeed? The program is as it as uh, it was present is is in your your well you no longer have a folder. We we saving money. Not only are we saving time, we are also saving money. Um, the the program ha um, is as it is on the on the program, um, and we have. Um, I just wanted to mention that Rita Gazito will take over as chair. Just
just after I've finished this beginning part. Uh, Rita is the specialist of teaching and learning in the Faculty of Science. Then uh, we have um, Tammy Sheffer, who will take over as chair just after the comfort break. She's the Deputy Dean of Teaching and Learning in the Arts Faculty. And the third session will be chaired by Professor Mohammed Parker, who's a Deputy Dean of Teaching and Learning in Dentistry. Um, so we are really in very safe hands. And we, the, the rapporteurs, as I've mentioned, are Professor Vivian Bozalik and uh, Dr. Juliet Stoltenkamp. Um, and so it, it, it feels that, well, I feel that I can really relax into the program because if something goes wrong, there are a whole lot of us in this room who are going to salvage it. Um, so what I wanted to say that just before I get uh, going with my first presentation um, is that uh, we do have several apologies. Um, life does happen and on Thursday when I went, was, went to go and uh, see Professor Vivian Lavac, who's the new DVC acad academic, because she was determined that she was going to be here. She had just heard that there was a special council meeting that had been called for today. So a number of the executive members who intended to be here, including the, the registrar, the rector, in fact can't be here. But who knows, maybe they'll have a really quick meeting and they'll be able to join us. Um, so, um, but um, they send their greetings um, and, and their apologies. Um, Many other, other colleagues have, have sent their apologies because they have, they have other competing demands. And some of you, I know, need to move in and out to various meetings. But I, as I've, I've just heard from a couple of colleagues, the new leadership is trying to keep meetings down to the, the real minimum. So uh, Sandy Zinn, for instance, thought she was only going to be here about 10, but she's already here. So that's great. Um, so if people are moving in and out, we know, we know why. It's not because they don't like us. Um, and because time is, is of the essence, I hope that was up there somewhere. Time is of the essence. Um, uh, we are not having a tea time or a refreshment break. You're having a comfort break of 15 minutes. So during that time, if you can do your comfort things and, and get a cup of tea and eat a donut all at once, that, that will be called polychronicity. That means doing many things at once. Um, the, um, our master student, Catherine Wynne Scully, who's not here yet, she's clearly late. Um, <laughs> um, she, uh, her thesis was on time, time for studies and looking at um, the, the lives of, of working librarians. Um, so she'll, she can put, she can, she can um, if I use some of her concepts incorrectly, she can correct me when she's here. Um, so coming out of this meeting will be a, a, a popular book, a booklet or an, an educational poster. Um, which will capture the key insights, which, which addresses the, the key questions which are on the table. Now, we've put these on the table just to keep us oriented. And the key questions for the research have been, what conditions need to change in order to give uh, working people access to higher education, which will lead to their success within universities, within workplaces, in working students' lives? And what insights are there from today's presentations, from the pilot sites and from your own experiences? We, like, we would like to see today as, in a way, a continuation of the research and to see you as co-researchers. So your, your insights will, in fact, be captured and, and will work into the, into the booklet and, and into the research. Um, so we're going to um, move from a first presentation where I'm going to be talk, giving a very quick overview of the project itself and some of the insights. We'll then, if Heidi is here by that stage, she'll be talking, giving a um, how, how this project fits into, um, into the national qualifications framework um, scenarios. And then we'll move to Miriam Zukas, who'll will help us stand from 
from an international perspective, looking back. And then after tea, we, we, we come back down to the ground and, and look at the pilot sites. Okay, so uh, if in fact Heidi isn't here by then, we'll just have to skip over that and she'll have to come in when, when we do. So on that note, I'll hand over to Rita. Here, here is here is Heidi and and Julie ready. They 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 really like to make an entrance. Um, these are our our colleagues from from Sakwa. Um, Heidi is the director of research and Julie Reddy is the deputy executive officer. A warm welcome to you. A join the table. Okay. And if I can just say um, that this, this workshop is building very much on the 2011 workshop and you have the, the booklet um, in, in your folder. Um, and also just to say that um, the, other, the other document you have is an abbreviated uh, research report on flexible learning and teaching and we'll talk about that a bit, a bit later. And the third is a, is a card on which you have the, the blog address on which all the documents, you can find all the documents. Okay, Rita, over to you. Okay. No, uh, well, uh, yeah, no, I don't know if you want to say anything. Okay, you're going to just keep me. Do you want I'm going to need this. Just. Okay. I'll just keep going. Yeah. Okay. Right. You'll just keep me in time, on time, more or less. Okay. Hmm? Oh, look at the time. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Let's see if this is working. Yeah. Okay. So um, these are the six moves I plan to make during the, the next 20 minutes. Um, the colloquium has its, the, um, as I've just said, the colloquium has its roots in the colloquium of 2011. Um, and we, this little booklet which we've just reprinted, we have um, dedicated to um, Ingrid Miller, who is our, our late, um, Registrar, who died unfortunately, very sadly, in, in 2013. The, the research is responding to uh, key, key paradoxes in the society. There's a national policy imperative to open access and success within a philosophy and approach to lifelong learning. But, at the same time, opportunities are closing down. UWC's 55-year tradition of offering a parallel, a parallel delivery system in the day and evening is breaking down. And I believe just yesterday or the day before, psychology was planning to stop its after-hours classes. Therefore, a key question in order to continue to serve its historic constituencies, is it possible to develop a new paradigm, to move beyond the binaries of part-time, full-time, day and night provision, to an inclusive concept conceptual framework which includes the diversity of all of our students. There is growing evidence that most of UWC students are in fact working or wanting to work as, as they have very precarious financial situations. Also, that part-time, full-time, day-after-hours categories are not accurate reflections of who is doing what, why, and when. SACWA, South African Qualifications Authority, is committed to supporting, and it says in, in their latest um, strategic plan, lifelong learners boldly 
And UWC has a mission statement to provide opportunities for lifelong learning. The common concern of the two institutions made us ideal partners to undertake this research. This is a, a university-wide initiative to try to ensure that it's not an innovation on the fringes of the institution. And what we've tried to, to capture here in a, with a bird's eye view is to show you the, the key question in the middle and the, the, two, the three pilot sites within three faculties on the sides, which are Library and Information Science in Faculty of Arts, um, Political Studies in EMS, Economic Management Sciences, and School of Public Health um, in, in Community Health Sciences. And just to say that the School of Public Health was in really a, is a, is a, we saw as a leading practice site. So, so this gives you a quick, quick overview of, um, of the project. Here we show that the research project works, has been working very closely with two other units uh, working across campus. That is the Directorate of Teaching and Learning and the CIECT, and Juliet and Vivian are here. Um, and Vivian has chaired the advisory committee uh, of, which is a subcommittee of the Senate Teaching and Learning Committee um, to, to help um, guide the, the project. And the project has reported in to uh, two uh, Senate subcommittees, Senate Lifelong Learning Committee and the Senate Teaching and Learning Committee. Um, and it has been located within the institutional operating plan, within um, the, the various national policies and so on. So that it's just to say that every effort was made to ensure that this wasn't a project on the side. It was a project in the middle of the institution, working and building on what, what is already there, but trying to then feed um, straight, straight into, into that. This gives, in a, in a nutshell, um, several of the formal deliverables, uh, which range from over the last three years, which range from academic papers, seminars on campus and nationally, um, to supporting pilot sites, and so on. So this is just to, um, to say that we've been busy. <laughs> Um, and also to say that um, from this you can see that the project has interacted with people across all faculties, in depth with pilot sites, with international visitors, with SACWA and other partners nationally. Um, and there were several project committees which were um, um, overseeing the, the process. So with this background, um, just locating, formally locating the project. Um, I, I now want to just shine some light on, uh, on some of the key themes uh, and, and issues that have been coming up. Firstly, uh, lifelong learning and lifelong learners are understood within a socioeconomic political context. Lifelong learners have multiple identities workers, citizens, human beings, and many others. Um, and the research was particularly concerned to look at the conditions that need to change at the university, at work, in the home. And they could be represented by the, um, the, three, tri the three triangles of the, um, the three points of the triangle. I just remember that I had this. I was given it by SACO. <coughs> Working students um, are not sitting with time on their hands. I hope that one was also put up. Um, and these are just some quotes from um, that come, that come out of uh, Catherine Wynne Scully's uh, thesis. 
a student. I'm thinking of leaving my job because I have to go to classes during the day. A line manager. Who's going to be on duty at the circulation desk, desk if she goes to class again this morning? Student. I'm sorry, but I really have to go to class now. Can you cover for me with the shelving? I'll be back by lunchtime, I promise. Line manager. We really need to provide more support to the students. But at the moment, at least they can apply for a bursary. Academic. I have to teach my classes, then go to the committee meeting, and then to the research meeting, and then to submit my reports. And I have to publish my paper. How will I succeed? How will I squeeze all of this in today? And the university manager. We must do everything we can to support the student in successful studies. But after hours classes are just too expensive. Yeah. This um, just points to um, the, some of the key themes. So time for studies, key theme. Understanding of flexible learning and teaching. Building common knowledge, relational expertise and agency, importance of resourceful leadership at all levels, uh, the, the fact of four institutional subsystems working together differently, differentiated possibilities for workplaces, university working together, and moving beyond the, bi the, the binary of, of the day, day, night, day and after hours classes, part and full time, what is needed. And I just want to touch on these very quickly. So this covers aspects of time, which, as I've said, has, mo has emerged as a cr crucial issue uh, for the research. Um, and uh, Catherine's study, which, as I've said, was time for studies for professional development of working librarians. And in her research, she studied students, what she referred to as construals of time. That means how we experience time. Also what they did to work around immense feelings of accelerations of time, which is referred to as enactments of time. And um, many, uh, I think inevitably in all of our lives, uh, we do many things at the same time and in the theory of time it's called polychronicity. So there's a new word if you didn't know it. Um, and this one strategy can lead to great stress and anxiety amongst working students, and of course amongst all of us as well. <clears throat> Understanding um, flexible learning and teaching, um, we need to confront the fact that uh, this is not this is not a technical matter. I think in many instances the de the default position from people who haven't really looked at it very carefully is that it relates to e-learning. Um, but it's much much more than that. Um, and it the when you're thinking about flexible learning and teaching, you you are confronting issues of identity amongst all involved. You, it's, it's, there are questions of knowledge, whose knowledge counts, when and where, and the power relations between students and managers, colleagues at work, amongst university staff, staff and students, working students negotiating time at home and in communities. So we need to keep this in mind that it's not, it is just not a technical matter. Um, this slide is thanks to Richard Edwards, um, and it's just a, a synopsis of some of the issues that are, are covered with inflexible learning and teaching, where you are 
um, concerned with learning, with technology, with culture. And you're asking questions of learning and teaching, questions of te technology and, te and technical implementation, and you're asking questions of a learning organization and culture. So I think it's just to, to say that um, when, when talking about flexible learning and teaching, it's something which is, it, it really is embedded within the whole organization. We found the, the work of Professor Anne Edwards from Oxford University um, as very helpful. Uh, she talks about building common knowledge through understanding the historically accumulated, uh, accumulated motives of others, if you are to bring about change in organizations. She argues you need to do much more than change surface behavior. You need to get beneath the surface to the philosophical um, underpinnings of, um, of, what, of what people believe. To what matters for people. It takes deep conversations and dialogue. To do this careful work, to put yourself in the shoes of others, she refers to as relational expertise. Once common knowledge is achieved, she would say that relational agency is possible. That is, you can get on and do things as a collective without having to check, check in all the time if you're on the same page. It takes time to get there, but it is a time saver in the end. And we have begun to do some of this, some of this careful work through the project, which we hope UWC can build on. Where I am, where am I? Resourceful leadership. <laughs> I've got so many bits of paper here, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Um, another important concept which, um, which Anne has, has, well, the way that she's spoken about it, um, is about if you are impl implementing any kind of change, you need what she would refer to as resourceful leadership. And this is leadership that is required to listen, to tap into, and to harvest innovations to help their movement upstream. Champions of innovation in teaching and learning at every level need affirmation and support to percolate common understandings of flexible learning up, down, and around the institution. And collaborative relationships are very important for the implementation of flexible learning and teaching. So it's the kind of leadership you have is absolutely critical. Um, the next key insight is that Universities, as we all know, are complex systems and we need to recognize that um, for flexible approaches you require profound shifts in the way that the entire university works, engages and develops knowledge. And there are four interdependence, at least four interdependent subsystems, the teacher, the student, delivery and administration. And that is why it is, it is a, very, it's a very challenging thing to do. Um, and it's much, um, it's the reason why you in fact need uh, to have the registrar's office, ICS, student support, academic planning, finance, academics, and so on, all um, 
in the same room together. So this calls for both strong top-down and bottom-up approaches to change. So if we are to try to change the current par parallel system, and uh, this is kind of an ideal type, but I think it's, it, it represents at least an administrative construction of what is happening, where you have the central conception is around the notion that we have full-time students, they, they're here from 8.30 to 4.30, they're not doing paid work, and they're between 18 and 24. Uh, on the periphery, we recognize that some of our students are part-time, some of them come to after-hours classes, they're in paid work or they're trying to get work and they're older than 25. Now, we know that um, this isn't, in fact, how life happens. And students certainly don't conform to the stark typology. Students are more accurately on a continuum than clearly one thing or another. Um, and the same can be said for pedagogical practices, which are occurring, which may be seen as outside the norm. And uh, you'll hear examples of this in the three pilot sites. And as I stand here, uh, looking back, I have the sense that we are doing what the uh, Italian Marxist uh, Antonio Gramsci described as, gr uh, as growing the new in the womb of the old. This research um, has, for the most part, highlighted what already is happening. So the question is, is it a case of the administrative arrangements catching up with the innovative, changing realities on the ground, coming from staff and students? And I think this is a really important question. So we acknowledge that the university is a complex institution to navigate and change. But what about workplaces? As we acknowledge that working students are navigating through at least their workplaces, the university, and home, what we've come to realize is that cooperation between universities and workplaces is certainly not a one-size-fits-all. Uh, it's logical that workplaces and universities have very different logics. Their reasons for existence are different. And there are many different ways of analyzing workplaces. Um, I draw on Stephanie Elias from her new book in 2014, uh, and where she draws on Friedson, and she, who argues that there are at least three ideal type labor markets. And each of these makes possibilities for working together more or less difficult. So for example, the professionally controlled labor market, like law, accounting, dentistry, have close relationships to universities as the professional bodies have a large say in the curricula and so on. But with the what termed the free labor market, this is virtually impossible, with people going out on their own. And, and the, the possibilities for working with, with the bureaucratic labor market is also, um, will be very differentiated. And I think that as you listen to the pilot sites presentations, listen out for what labor markets they are relating to. Because this is really important. Um, and I think that it's that perspective that might help us to work, to work through it. Um, so where to from here in order to, answer, in order to answer the questions that you have on your tables? Here are some big ideas which may not be big enough or they may be too big. Uh, and these might be something that we can come back to as we go through the program. Firstly, build a, this is from a UWC standpoint, 
build a, an undergraduate whole degree um, which takes flexible learning and teaching um, principles very seriously. And you'll hear more about this uh, in, when you hear about the, the um, scoping that's been done around the B admin degree. Uh, we need to ensure the building of common understandings about flexible learning and teaching. Um, and this could potentially be done through a high-level mission initiative, which has, which has a strengthened directorate of teaching and learning, together with CIECT and Cognate units, which, which can make real progress in the next three to five years to develop one common frame of reference for all our students. The third possibility is understanding the blockages within the four subsystems, um, and there are many. Support and incentivize what is taking place on the ground. And I'd like to add another one, which is that um, all executive leadership uh, both at the center of the university and in faculties, should attend the Czech Emerging Technologies course um, so that they at least have some idea of what uh, is being talked about. The immediate next steps uh, are to close and gift forward the project to the new UWC leadership and to all of you here, to disseminate its findings, um, to have a high-level meeting between UWC and SACWA, um, and the DVC academic uh, will host this in late July, um, to have you fast-track this work within your faculties and units, and so move towards common understandings of flexible learning, and in this way deepen prospects for innovative pedagogies for all our students, working or not, older or younger. The imperatives emanating from this project, which amplify much of what many of you are already doing, resonate with what Jake Schadl said in 1987, that UWC would offer itself to experiment with the ideas of communities of the future, precisely because UWC students are drawn mainly from the working class, and we hope that this project can contribute in some ways to this ambition. Thank you.